All right. Well, happy Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening, uh, depending where in the world you're joining us today. Um, I'm very excited because I have some special guests that I'll introduce in just a moment. Um, but let's kick things off and get started. And there we go. All right. So uh, for those that have been around um, AppSheet for a little while, you may or may not be familiar with an individual uh, named Derek. Derek is a solutions consultant with AppSheet. And Derek, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, maybe say your favorite caffeinated beverage. Sure. Uh, nice to uh, have everybody on the uh, office hours this morning. My name is Derek. I am a solutions consultant and I joined AppSheet uh, back in the startup days. And uh, then when Google acquired AppSheet, they acquired me too. And so uh, since then, I'm uh, still supporting AppSheet and have also integrated uh, in with our Apigee API management uh, product, uh, both under the business application platform umbrella. Uh, so looking forward to the office hours today and uh, thank you everybody for joining. And Derek, oh, and uh, for our personal note today. Beverage. <laughs> coffee. Coffee? Yeah, easy answer. Yeah. Uh, all right, and thank you, Derek, for that. And then next up, we have Natalie uh, joining us this morning. Uh, Natalie is a software engineer, um, and she'll be showcasing a few new capabilities that will come be coming out in the near future. Uh, Natalie, if you'd like to uh, dive a little deeper and then share your favorite caffeinated beverage for our personal uh, fact today. Yeah, hey, everyone. Um, I'm Natalie Caronaga. I'm a software engineer on AppSheet working with the editor team to improve the app authoring experience. Um, I joined back in March um, from the Google side. And my favorite caffeinated beverage, I'd say, is the occasional iced coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. Really excited to have you here. Um, and the, for those that have not joined us for an office hours before, or it's been a while, um, my name is Jennifer. I'm a product marketing manager here. Uh, I am joined by my work from home co-host Roxy, because in the States we are uh, in lockdown yet again. Um, so if you do hear any background noise from any of our computers, we apologize in advance. Just a, a state of the circumstances. Roxy's usually pretty quiet, but I have a feeling she, there we go, she might say a couple of hellos today. So bear with us um, if we have any drop signals, but we will get started uh, talking a little bit more about AppSheet. All right, uh, so for an agenda today, we'll cover a few resources. Uh, this is particularly helpful for those that are new to the platform. We have a few announcements to share as well. Uh, we'll provide a demo, as I just mentioned, of some of the items that Natalie's been working on. And then Derek has a really great section on uh, helpful UIs for your applications. We'll pepper in questions as we go, but we'll try to dedicate the last 10 minutes to Q&A. And then we have a few additional next step items for you all as well. So for those that are new to the platform, oh, and I, I should mention, um, there is a link in the chat box off on, on your screen uh, that will take you to our creator community, which we'll talk about a little more in a moment. Um, but if you have any questions, highly recommend posting them to that particular link for today's date. Um, it's a great place for us to follow up after the session if we're not able to address it uh, during this time. So wanted to flag that for you as well. All right, so speaking of the creator community, um, we have a number of great resources that are mostly cloud sourced. Um, this is a free option available for users that want to either learn more about our platform, um, connect with other AppSheet creators, advance your skill set, or see what else others are building. And we highly recommend um, signing up for this resource. Our team is on there. It's a great way to interact with us in a slightly different style of environment. And I, so I highly, highly recommend uh, signing up, posting, and also checking out this particular uh, post, which is learning how to use AppSheet. Um, it's pinned in the resource section now, I believe, and I'm happy to, to link it in the community thread for this particular se session, excuse me. Uh, but there are 10 resources here, including our App Academy, uh, or excuse me, AppSheet Academy, uh, hosted on Udemy, which provides a great 90-minute overview to get you started. You can also read through additional resources, such as how to design your application, uh, watch a previous webinar on data schema structure, which is also really important for successful applications. 
Now, for those that are non-English speakers or have uh, clients who English is a second language or, or non-existent at all, we do recognize that our resources are predominantly in English. So we wanted to create a space within that same community forum that allows uh, those that are non-English speakers to post their resources to help others. I know Spanish has been particularly popular as of late. Uh, there's three or four, excuse me, individuals in our space who have posted great instructional um, websites with videos, webinars that are hosted. We also have Japanese. I think I've seen Russian on there too. Um, so do check it out. Uh, it's a great, great tool to see not only what others are doing, but to help um, both yourself and your customers in different regions around the world as well. It's really cool to see that others have crowdsourced this. All right, so um, AppSheet Automation. We made this announcement in September, uh, but we are still taking applicants for the Early Access Program. Uh, I'm happy to post this link in the thread for today as well. But for those that have never, oh, sorry, dog. Um, for those that have never uh, participated in a test-like environment, um, for a product, this is a really, really cool opportunity to have some input in the early stages of something our team is really excited about. We work directly with you, um, you provide feedback, and it helps us iterate and improve the product as we move along. And you also get early access to some pretty cool stuff too. So do sign up. Um, again, I'm happy to post a link for those that are interested uh, in our, our AppSheet community forum uh, as well. And if you have any questions, too, uh, we were happy to follow up on this one. All right, so Natalie, you're gonna be up first. You ready? Yep. All right. So uh, I'm just gonna touch on a couple of uh, these items and Natalie, I'll hand it over to you. Um, so just a couple of feature updates to mention today. Uh, materials update has been, or is being slowly rolled out, excuse me. There have been some adjustments to the font sizes and I know there's a few really active threads in our forum um, that we are monitoring really closely to get information out as quickly as possible. Um, but wanted to flag that for you all. And then uh, next up is the item that Natalie is going to be diving in a little deeper and she'll provide a quick demo. Um, Natalie, I hand the floor over to you to discuss uh, nested DREFs. Great, thanks Jen. Um, so Natalie, if you want to provide a quick overview of what uh, nested DREFs are, uh, and then maybe we show your demo. Yeah, of course. So um, uh, today I'll be demoing the exciting upcoming improvement to dereference expressions. But first I wanted to give a primer for those who have uh, maybe less experience with expressions, what refs and DREFs are. So ref is basically just a reference to a row in another table. And the value of a ref is just the key of the row it's referencing. Then a deref accesses a column from the referenced row. Um, I'll show this more in my demo, um, but currently we only allow single derefs. So for example, shelf.room, but coming soon, we will have nested derefs where you can do multiple dereferences. Awesome, all right, so let's show our audience um, exactly what you're talking about. Okay, great. Um, so I wanted to show an example of what a ref is. Um, we'll take a look at an app I've created through the Start With An Idea tool. Um, this is a library app. Uh, so I put some fake data from the Smithsonian libraries in it. This app took me less than 30 minutes, but we've managed to represent some non-trivial data relations here, which uh, shows how easy it is to set up something like this. If we look at my book table schema, I have a ref to author. And so, like I said before, the value is just a key of a row in the author table. Um, from the app creator's perspective, this ref created a relationship between the book and the author tables. And um, Refs are the foundation of creating relationships between tables. And from the end user's perspective, they receive the benefit um, of the refs type since it allows you to go to the actual row in the author table. So here's my book view. 
and here's my ref to the author, I can click it and see the actual row. Um, so now what if I wanted to see the information about the referenced author, but from this book table view without doing this click through to the ref and scrolling down to it? Um, this is where we would use a special expression called the deref or dereference. The deref would let us get this value from that referenced row. So I'll add a virtual column, uh, call it author bio. And then I'll add the formula. Here I'm using the ex expression assistant. In this case, the assistant already has the expression we want in its list of suggestions. So I'll insert it here. Um, I can explain the syntax here. The DRF expression has two parts. The first part on the left side uh, requires a column expression where the type is a ref. And then the second part on the right side needs a column from the reference table. In that case, this is a column in the author table. And then this dot is the DREF operator. So I'll hit save. And we can see that AppSheet inferred the result type of the expression, which in this case is long text. And then hit save on my app here. Um, just creating and saving a new version of the app. Checks that the app is consistent. Okay, and there we can see that the DREF works. Uh, so the upcoming improvement to DREFs that will roll out to everyone soon is the nested DREF. Um, instead of being only only being able to DREF once, um, we will be able to DREF multiple times. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, DREFs might have, I mean, uh, apps might have a large hierarchy of tables that have references to each other. Um, to model this, my app has a five level hierarchy from books to shelf, to room, to floor, and to building. Um, but what if I want my book to show the description of the building it's in? Without nested DREFs, I have to click through all these refs like I just did to find what I want, which is really inefficient. And there's also a clunky workaround that advanced users may know to do it, to add a virtual column to compute each DREF separately. That's also a pain. So to avoid all that, we're gonna add a nested DREF um, I'll add a virtual column here, call it building, me, building description, and then add the formula. So in this expression, we have a ref to shelf in the book table, and then that row has a ref to room, which has a ref to floor, to the building, and the building row has a column called description. So since these four columns all have type ref, I can use the deref on them each time to get the column from the referenced row. So hit save, infer the type again. Uh, create another app version here. And we can scroll down and see that we uh, pulled in the correct data. Um, so I know a lot of folks in the community have requested this feature, especially uh, since it doesn't really take that much for an app to need to represent data with these nested relations. So we're really excited for this feature to go out to everyone in the coming weeks. And uh, that's the breakdown with nested DREFs. And with that, I'll pass it back. Awesome. That is a very, very cool uh, feature, Natalie. Thank you so much for, for showing that. And let's pull this over. Okay, perfect. And as Natalie mentioned, um, that will be rolling out in a few weeks. And Natalie will probably put a post up on the community in the feature release notes section when, when that's live. Is that correct? Uh, yep, that's right. Awesome. So everyone keep an eye out um, for that official announcement. But thank you so much for sharing what you've been working on.
Uh, all right, so next up, uh, we're going to uh, have Derek take over a little bit, and he's going to be discussing helpful UIs. Uh, but before Derek uh, dives in a little deeper, uh, I wanted to give one uh, quick point of context for what we're going to be discussing in a moment. Um, so UIs, um, part of that experience is what's called a view type in AppSheet. And AppSheet, uh, I've been with the product, I think, for a year and a half now. And in that time, we've added several view types. I want to say five, maybe. So this is an area that um, is growing quite a bit. We continue to add more and improve. And uh, Derek is going to show two really cool ones, as well as a few additional tips and tricks. Um, but there are a number of view types um, listed here. And you can see a few examples. Today, we'll be focusing on uh, details view and onboarding view. Uh, and with that, Derek, dive in. Cool. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, so the topic is uh, helpful UI. So uh, something that I've come across in, in building apps and helping other people build apps is uh, adding documentation. Sometimes. Uh, we create this really cool app and we get immersed in it as we're building it and we turn it over to our users and they open it up and they don't know how to use it um, because there isn't any documentation. And so uh, I've documented apps in a lot of different ways, uh, sometimes in a separate document, uh, which is great, except people don't always find it. Uh, some groups, they use a wiki, uh, which, which is OK. Uh, universally, the, the best place I've found to document my apps is in my apps. And that's the subject that I'm going to uh, present on today is just a few different options. These, these are all pretty, uh, pretty basic and accessible to people who are getting started and useful for people who have been in the platform for a long time as well. A uh, few, few basic options for, for adding documentation into your app. So the first one I'm going to look at is onboarding views, uh, detail views second, and then success messages and show columns. Before I do that, I need to share my screen. And to share my screen, I need to ask Jennifer for some help. Can you and put me to the, me there we go. It. Yeah. All right. There we go. Cool. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is a onboarding view. And uh, the, just a, a quick context, the application here, this is a telehealth application. So the intent is uh, for users to log into the application, they can schedule an appointment with a doctor. Um, generically, the pattern would really work with, with any kind of service that where appointment scheduling is required. Uh, when my user first logs into the application, uh, my starting view is this onboarding view. And the onboarding view has uh, three different screens to it. The first one is just a welcome, uh, says what the app does, and I can click next and see a little bit more information. Uh, this app is for scheduling appointments and a little blurb about uh, you know, what's, what's special about that. And then I added a third one here about wellness tracking. So after you schedule the appointment, what comes next? Uh, so Initially, upon opening, my users already have some idea about how this app works. And once they click done, now they open the app. Uh, so uh, pretty pretty simple to set up. Uh, in order to make that work, uh, what I did is uh, I'll, I'll open up the app definition. And I'm under UX views, and I created this welcome view here. And the welcome view uh, is uh, it's 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 referencing a data table, which in this case is stored in a spreadsheet. It's directions, and the view type is onboarding. And down here in the view options, I've I've referenced a few columns. Uh, be before I go through these, I'm I'm going to jump over to my data source. So. Just like if you're doing a list view or a detail view or, or any other kind, there, there's a data table behind this. And so let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm here in my spreadsheet now, and I'm looking at the, uh, I believe this is under the directions tab. Uh, so directions, this is the name of the table in my app. And I've added a few columns here, uh, an ID column, just as, as essentially routine for me. Uh, Nothing special about the ID column. Uh, we just need every every column in AppSheet needs to have an ID 
uh, the only two rules for IDs is that they're unique and they never change. So I'll generally, you, there, there's often a lot of different ways you can do that. Personally, I, I almost always make that first column an ID column, so it's just out of the way and I don't have to risk um, uh, violating either of those rules in the future. The other columns I have here are an image, a title, and a blurb. Uh, and I have one blurb, I could have two blurbs. Uh, something that, that isn't always obvious for somebody when they're first starting in the app, uh, the names of these columns are totally up to you. Uh, calling an image column image uh, is not a requirement. You can call the column anything you want. The naming convention that I have here is just to help me as the app creator keep straight what kind of information I have in these columns. Hey, Derek. Um, yes. I'm getting a few notes that individuals cannot see your screen. Can you check your sharing settings? Oh, sure. Uh, really quickly. Uh, I see, it looks like I'm sharing, but uh, let's I see. I can see I your will... screen, but I have okay. a few I'll that are. Stop unclear. showing and I'll start again. Okay. So, let's, so I've, I've started sharing screen two again. All right. Which, uh, you sh so you should see a spreadsheet. Okay. Yep, people are seeing it now. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, you know, just to repeat that last little bit, here are the column headers and uh, we'll see the, the naming convention I've used here was just to uh, make it easy for me to remember what type of information I have in these columns. So if I come back over to my application, you'll see under view options, uh, when you're doing an, uh, an onboarding view, the view options you're given are to select an image, a title, a short blurb, and a second sh short blurb. So that's pretty obviously that's that's where that naming convention came from. So I of course selected the image, uh, and that's the icon we're seeing here. And then the title, that's what we're seeing in bold here. And then blurb one is this little block of text here. And I, I could have done a second blurb in this case, I, I didn't. Uh, the final setting that you have available is the finish view, and so. Once a person has gone through that onboarding, then you can kick them out into to whatever view uh, you want them to see next. Uh, so th this is really helpful. The finish view is really helpful when your onboarding is the first thing people see when they come into the app. Uh, so the last thing to show on that is uh, with this particular app, I've, I've actually used the onboarding view in two ways. Uh, I've, I've made it the initial thing that people see and then I've also uh, stored it up here in the menu. So if you come up to the top left menu, uh, you'll see the welcome option and that brings you back here. So anytime a person needs to refresh their memory about what the app does, they can always come back up and see their, their onboarding view here with, with that set of directions. And last thing I'd point out is I, I, I use three rows. There's no limit. Well, I don't think there's a limit. Uh, practically speaking, you probably want to have anywhere from like one to, you know, maybe eight rows or something uh, for, for your onboarding. So that's the first one. Um, the second one I wanted to show was details view. So similar, but a little bit different. Uh, and for that, I'm going to switch into a different application. So uh, this is my demo launcher. Uh, personally, I, a lot of, uh, a lot of times when I'm uh, in, a, in a meeting, it's to present AppSheet to somebody. And based on what a person's interested in seeing, I have a, several different apps that I, I may choose to show as, as a good way to showcase particular functionality. So I created an application to uh, manage all these other applications. And this, this is my demo catalog. Uh, and I've, I've shared this with a lot of my uh, a lot of my uh, coworkers, and so similarly, when people see this app, they have some questions about how it works. So for this app, I use detail views, and if we come up to the top left menu, uh, I made this option uh, <laughs> called "huh," and if you click that, uh, you'll see a, a list of all the different topics that are, are in my help section. And if I click into one of those, uh, you'll just see some additional information about how to search in this app, or I can click through these uh, and, and see other information about how this app works. So with, uh, with the detail view, uh, it's, it's, it's similar, but there's, there's some important differences. Um, first, I'll, I'll go to the data source here. And so uh, this potentially is a, is a little 
confusing in the context of this office hours, I apologize, but I've, I've called this table onboarding. We just talked about an onboarding view. We're now talking about detailed view, so don't let the naming convention uh, throw you off. Um, in terms of data structure, it's it's quite similar. Uh, I've, I've again, I've, I've used an image column. I, I made a title. I did the same thing. Blurb one. Here's here's where things are different in the detail view. You could add additional columns here, and they would show up in line here. And so, uh, for example, AppSheet can embed a video that's hosted on the internet. So if you had a YouTube video that demonstrates something that you wanted to show you could uh, put a link to that YouTube video in, in a column here and uh, set that, that uh, column type to video. And then inside of your app, you would have that embedded and people could click on it. Uh, similarly, if you needed to add a URL or add a link to another app, and, you know, what, whatever data type in AppSheet you want to use, you could build that up here. So, so using a detail view like this is a little bit more customizable. Uh, the let's see, I, so that's that's everything I wanted to show on the detail view. Uh, I guess one one other thing to to mention on this is just the um, ability to edit it. Uh, so inside, if I go back to the list view here, you can see I have this uh, little plus button here, and I used a formula inside of AppSheet uh, so that only admins uh, see this plus button. And you can set that up a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that in this conversation, but uh, what, what, I, what I'll mention is that if you wanted to have this onboarding view or, or have this detail list view, um, you could uh, either create a table of people who will have access to this, and then use a formula to check if the logged in user's email is inside of that table of people that you've, you've authorized. Uh, or you could use AppSheet's built-in access, uh, built-in role, uh, which uh, I'll come back to my app settings, go to user, scroll down. And if I added uh, a, a new user here, can tell the robot I'm not a robot, uh, add that person in, and come down here, you'll see this uh, role user versus role admin. Uh, that's AppSheet's uh, built-in user role management uh, feature, and you could use that uh, inside formulas of your app to determine who sees that, that uh, plus button. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave that part uh, there and, and move on to the next uh, view type. This one is cool. So uh, the next one is uh, thank you messages. Uh, Thank you is, is generic. Messages uh, is, is really the, the theme here. So sometimes our users fill out a form inside of uh, inside of our app. And once they fill out the form, we want to like let them know that, that we got it and just kind of give them that that uh, that warm, fuzzy feeling that their submission didn't just go off into a black hole, but it's it's been received by a, a, a caring human on the other end. And so to do that, I'll, I'll usually put uh, thank you messages into my apps after form submissions. That's so a nice touch, how do Jerry. I do that? Thanks. It's a very yeah. nice touch, yeah. Uh, so to do that, uh, I'll, I'll first I'll demonstrate it. Let's come into our demo launcher here. And I've given uh, my coworkers the ability to add their own applications to this app. And so I'll just add a test app here. So I'm just going to put in some some quick data here, just so we can get through the required fields of the form and submit for review. And voila, your app is submitted. Thanks for adding your app. One of our uh, demo chipmunks is screwing to review. Response time is usually within one business day. So that's that's me. That's the picture of me there. Um, <laughs> uh, so a lot of resemblance there. <laughs> thanks. Um, <laughs> the so so how did I set that up? Uh, there, there's a few steps here that that went into uh, making making this work. Um, the first, I'll, I'm going to start with showing you the data, uh, then I'll show you the settings in the view. Uh, I, I have a view, a behavior, and an action inside a separate view. So I'll I'll go through all those and show you the the individual steps. So that after you click the uh, submit button on a form, 
it gives you this type of a message. And let's start with this one. So uh, similar to my onboarding table, I've, I've got this separate table called messages. And the message table has a, again, an ID column, a header, uh, the message itself, and an image. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're, they're, you're seeing a common common theme here. Sorry, if I go back here, you'll see the the image, the header, the the message, and uh, one thing that you'll notice here is that the the message ID uh, I I made that something that I could reference pretty easily, and I'll, I'll show you why in just a moment here. Um, okay, so I'll come back to my app settings. And the uh, next thing I'll show is under the data. Uh, so under uh, inside of my view settings, uh, let's come and look at the specific view that created this. Um, I'll come to UX and uh, let's find messages. We'll bring this up and. So messages, uh, what we're seeing here, this is a detail view. And the detail view is, uh, 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 it's using the card function. Uh, so this is another new feature inside of AppSheet. Uh, when you do detail views, you can either do classic mode or card mode. I've chosen to use the card mode here. Uh, the reason I did that is I just like the layout. I like this uh, being bolded and a slightly larger font, this one, uh, being slightly smaller, having the image up here, uh, that 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 general layout worked well for me. And so, when you're setting up a card view, you can select each of those elements inside of uh, the layout here, and then select which column you want to show. So, I've I've clicked on this element. I uh, told it I want to show the header column, and the header column is corresponding uh, to this header column inside of my spreadsheet inside of the uh, messages table uh, of my spreadsheet. And so similarly, I did the same for my text. I've set that to message and the image I've, I've set there. So that's the, that's, the, that's the view that I want to, to show here. Now, how do I get that view to pop up after somebody saves a form? Um, the next piece of that process is to make a behavior. And so, in AppSheet, we've got data, views, and behaviors. Uh, data is obviously, you know, the, this, this is the content. Uh, the, the view is how people see that content. And the behavior is like the connective tissue between those. It's uh, when, when you click a button, what happens? Or when, when you click a, a submit on a form, do we wanna add any kind of automation? Do we wanna like create any, any, uh, any behavior that happens af after uh, a person does that action? And so the behavior that I created here, uh, I want to, what, when, when I explain to people about, you know, it, when people are getting started in the platform and they're, they're thinking about these behaviors, I, I always recommend start by thinking about what you want it to do. do don't, don't worry too much about what app sheet, what, what the settings are, or what it does. You know, first really, really like write down and think through what, what would I like to have happen here? And to me, when, when, I, when the user clicks that button, what I want them to do is I, I want to redirect that user uh, to, to this view that I created, the, the uh, detail view that we just showed. And so with that objective in mind, uh, I came over here to behavior, I created a new action and I called it exactly what I want to do, redirect to new app success. And that's when I started getting into the app sheet functionality that will enable that. So in this case, uh, I, each action needs to be affiliated with a table. And so in this case, I've affiliated this action with the apps table. And the reason I did that is because this action is gonna trigger when something happens to that apps table. In this case, a form is saved against that apps table. And so I, I want the action to be available to, to that apps table. And the thing I want to do is go to another view uh, so in the drop down here, we have we have lots of, lots of options. I want to redirect to another view, so I selected that one. And then here's the part that uh, is is you know depending where you're at in learning AppSheet uh, can be more or less obvious. 
In this case, I want uh, the view to link to another row of a specific table. Uh, the way I found that initially is if I come here to help that app sheet, and let's say we start with uh, link to view, we could uh, come in here and see information about this. And, and this is kind of nice. Uh, this would take us to another view, but it's not going to take us to a specific row of another view. Because if, if we look back at the uh, at this messages table, we have a few different rows here. So if we just direct to a detail view, it's not going to tell us which detail view. We want to specifically see the message that's supposed to come up after a new app. And so sorry, come back come back over here. So, so link to view is not quite what I wanted. So I, I came back to functions and uh, I can scroll down to the L's here. And here we have all these different options. We have link text, link to app, link to filtered view, link to form, link to row. And after scrolling through these, kind of clicked through, looked at the different syntaxes, and, and when you look at link to row, this this is this is matching what I want. It's it's taking me to a specific row within a specific table, and the syntax here is to specify the key of the of the of the row that you want to link to, and then the, the name of the view. So that's what I did here: uh, link to row, new app that corresponds to the key I specified there. And again, new app that was just for my own uh, sanity. You could have made that an eight character, uh, eight character alphanumeric sequence. You could have called it really anything you want. Uh, that, that was just for, for my own uh, remembering. Uh, so link to row, there's my key, new app, messages. That's the, the name of the table that we looked at back here. And uh, that, that's, so that's what I uh, assigned to this action. Okay, great. So we've got our view, we've got our action. Now, how, last piece of this puzzle. Uh, our, our original intent was when, when you submit this form, uh, then we want to redirect the user to the specific row of this table that we created. So how do we connect this action to that event? Uh, so the last piece of the puzzle I'll show you, that, that lives under the UX. And I'm actually going to get to this uh, using these hyperlinks here. So in our in our live preview, uh, I'm going to go to add app, and whenever I'm trying to connect an event to a particular view inside of AppSheet, I'll often bring that view up in my live preview, and I'll use the the link the hyperlink down here to just bring up the details. So we're in UX views, and we're under add app. And if I scroll up and down here, you'll see I, I could have easily just scrolled through that list and found it. The reason I like to do this is that as as your app grows, sometimes you'll you'll get a you'll get some uh, system created views, you'll get some custom made views, you'll get some that are associated with slices. Uh, there's been a few times where I've attached an action to the wrong view, and I, I'm clicking and I'm wondering why, why doesn't this thing work? And I, I realize because I attached it to the wrong view. So I like to uh, bring the view up here, so I know this is exactly where I want to be. I use the hyperlink. I'll bring up the the details. And when uh, the user clicks submit for review, I want to trigger that action. And so inside of your view settings, uh, we can scroll down. We've got the the uh, you know the standard stuff, uh, what the name of it, the type of view. We've got some options. We've got the columns that we want to include. Uh, this is another cool new feature. Uh, it's been out for I think a couple months now, but inside of your forms, you can uh, customize the columns that show up. Uh, um, Anyway, keep scrolling down, and we've got our finish view here, and bingo, event actions, uh, actions to take when events occur. And our one option here is form save. So what, what action would you like to attach this form saved event? And so I selected my redirect option that we created, and by, by attaching that to form saved, when I click this button, then it takes me to my, my little demo chipmunk view and, and thanks the user and, and lets them know that we valued their input and we're, we're taking action on it. So uh, that's a that's a pretty cool uh, pattern that you can use in a lot of different ways. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, when, when you're creating an app that's going to get a variety of different users that, that may or may not be familiar with your group, uh, then, uh, you know, it's nice to just give them give them that information inside of the app. 
so the last one I'm going to touch on is is a is a quick one. I'll just spend a couple minutes on this, and then I'll I'll take some time for questions. Uh, so the last one I'm going to show is uh, show columns, and show columns are great for forms. So you can see uh, this form. You know, I, it's it's okay. Uh, you can see the the app title, the icons. You know, I, I've I've put some thoughtful uh, labels in here so people kind of know what it's, what's happening. Uh, sometimes a uh, little extra information can go a long way. And so to do that, uh, we can use show columns. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's go back to my telehealth app and we'll schedule a new visit. And here we're in a form. This is a pretty simple example, but I think useful all the same. Again, we, we have some we have some descriptive labels here. Uh, the the one thing that I've added is just this just a section header. And the way that I added the section header is is using the show column. So uh, let's go back to the data table, and we are in. Let's see, I believe we are in the, this should be the appointments. And I'm just gonna admit it, show columns are weird. Uh, it's, it's, a weird <laughs> it's a weird syntax. Uh, I will describe how to use it, I, 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 uh, but I, I will acknowledge that it's a little strange. Uh, the strangeness is because a show column has, it's a, it's a blank column, it's, it's in your data source, it's blank. No information is ever going to go into it, uh, but uh, that, that that's the way that it's set up. And and you know, you can come to love show columns. Uh, one one thing that I have found useful is uh, you you know if you're using like um, I'm going to show you how to do a section header with a show column. You could also use this for a page break. If you're doing a page break uh, and you're using the default order of your columns, that's kind of nice because you see a, a a blank page break break column and another blank page break column and you know that everything in between those two columns is on one page so again if you have the default sequence you could change the sequence so that that wouldn't always be true but um one I, i'm an optimist i know it's the silver lining i suppose uh <laughs> but the show column is a blank column and it's in our data source and in this case i've called it show description coming back to the app settings uh let's go to my appointments and so i'm in data i'm going to click to view columns and let's scroll down to my show description here and and so i've done i've, I've given that data type show and i'll click the edit pencil and show you that uh, after giving a data type show then it, it opened up these type details and i gave it a section header the other options like i mentioned are page header text url image video uh, in this case, I give it section header, and I, I specify some content, and so you'll you'll see that content show up here as as a section header. Um, so so that that can be nice, and uh, you know especially as as your forms, you know, if if you have a complicated form, then adding in some page breaks and section headers, and uh, maybe an image or URL or something can can be invaluable to your users. Um, on that note, also, uh, you know, our, our <laughs> some of our uh, solutions consultants and and many of our uh, community members are are always finding new ways to implement functionality in AppSheet. Uh, just this morning, uh, Ty, one of our other solutions consultants, I, I saw a post from him in the community uh, specifically about show columns and doing a workaround so that uh, you create a show column using a virtual column. Um, I, I, it's and it's uh it's it is I'll, I'll again i'll i'll acknowledge it's a workaround it's it's not necessarily going to show up in core documentation but it's it's a clever way to uh to uh implement something that we may have been familiar with uh but in a slightly different way so the community is a, is a great resource for new advanced intermediate like i i use it on a very regular basis myself so uh just and Derek, plug for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tie a few things together there. So Jonathan, um, a very active member of our creator community, um, he just he touched on what you mentioned, but he tied a few concepts we've talked about today together. And he said, you can use virtual columns for the show columns to keep the blank columns out of your database. But months ago, it required creation of slices to organize the show columns in form views. 
But now that we have form ordering in UX views, which is something you touched on just a moment ago, you don't need slices at all. Uh, so okay. that's a thank you, Jonathan, for sharing that. Um, and that might actually be exactly what Ty had posted as well. But um, for those that have been with AppSheet for a while, just a, a cool like, new way of thinking about it. So great call out there, Derek. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that that uh, th those are the four ways I wanted to highlight for adding documentation to your app. Uh, I hope that's useful. Uh, again, if, if um, you know, I'll, I'll give a plug. If if you get started on any of those, uh, my first stop for questions is always a community. The uh, chances are something you're developing, somebody else has, has had a similar question. Uh, so uh, it's it's always good to check there. And if they haven't, post it. Uh, we we love to see new implementations and new ways of looking at AppSheet. Uh, there's tons of people on there that are are happy to to jump in and help with your question. Uh, so. With that, uh, I'll open it up. Are there any other questions, Jennifer? I have lots of questions uh, for both you and Natalie. Uh, Derek, would you be all right if we left your screen open for a little bit since you have AppSheet open as well, just in case there's something to show in the editor? Sure, no problem. Okay, awesome. So um, Natalie, I'm gonna start with a question for you. Uh, so love the nested DRefs. How well do these relationships perform? And this question is specifically related to large data sets. Is there an impact on loading times? Um, I don't think there will be an uh, impact on loading times. Um, the, uh, the index of where the references should be, um, it's like hard coded into your app. I, so I don't think there should be any performance implications. Um, yeah, I can um, look into that more, but um, if you have like performance issues, you can always um, open a support ticket and we can take a look at it that way. Um, but I don't foresee any issues uh, at the moment. Yeah, but thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you, Natalie, for the answer. Uh, all right, so Derek, this is going to be um, an onboarding view type. We have a, a few questions related to this. And Natalie, please feel free to add any input you might have here as well. Um, so for onboarding, uh, does this onboarding directions view type automatically pop up every time someone opens the app? Or is it just the very first time that they enter the app? So uh, you have the ability to control that. And uh, just briefly, I'll, I'll show you where that lives. If, if you come to UX, Options, Starting View. In this case, I've selected, uh, I have all, these are all the views in my app, uh, and I've selected Welcome. So in my case, it'll show, it'll um, pop up the first time, the, it'll, it'll pop open every time a person opens the app as the starting view. Alternatively, uh, this flask icon, uh, anywhere you see that in AppSheet, you can click that, it turns into a formula, and now you can add logic. And so uh, you could create some logic so that it only pops up the first time an op a person opens the app. Uh, in order to do that, you just need to modify some piece of data when a person opens the app for the first time so that you can reference that inside of your formula. Awesome. Thank you for that, Derek. Uh, okay, so a couple more related to onboarding. Is it possible to use an animated image like a GIF uh, for onboarding view? I have, uh, so, so this is something, that, that's a great question. I was looking at that yesterday. Uh, I have seen some examples in the community of people doing that, and I set that up myself. Uh, one of the things I read from other people's experience is that there can be a delay uh, when you attach a GIF as an image, or you, 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 there's no data type GIF inside of AppSheet. You would use data type equals image, and then you would uh, set a reference to your, your GIF file rather than a PNG or something. Uh, when you do that, some people have experienced a little bit of a lag when you open up the view until you see the GIF, uh, generally because a GIF can get quite large, and so it's a lot more data to, to be loading. Um, so I gave it a shot last night because I, I thought that would be cool to show in the demo today, actually. And uh, it, it didn't work great for me. Uh, so I guess, sorry, that's not a very definitive answer. Uh, what I guess I would say is you could give it a shot. Uh, if you do, I would recommend trying to keep the file size very small so they don't run into lag issues. 
and uh, you can check out the community again if, if you want to see other people's comments on, on that same topic. Um, so it's it's kind of a um, it's one of those areas where it's 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 not core design, uh, but you know you you may be able to make it work. Uh, and if you do get a cool working example and you would like to share it, then again, community is a great spot. So speaking of the community and Jonathan, Jonathan, you're on fire today. Um, he posted actually a good kind of workaround solution for that. Uh, use animated SVGs. Yep. Um, yeah. He's seeing their fraction of the size, much more performative, and you're able to accomplish something very similar. So um, there's a, a great tip for everyone. Thanks, Jonathan. That's a, yeah, thank you. That, that's a great yeah, call out. That's uh, great. One thing I'll say about SVGs is, uh, they're really cool. I have them in some of my apps. Uh, they can be a bit of a bear to set up. Uh, what you end up doing is, um, again, you, you you specify the column type as an image, and then your image is essentially a, a, a URL to to an SVG. And the uh, you, you, depending on the complexity of that SVG, you can end up with a lot of different parentheses uh, or quotation marks rather, uh, and it, Set your set some time aside. Again, community is, is a fantastic resource. There's a phenomenal thread on there. I think it's one of the most viewed threads in, in the entire community yeah. uh, about SVG graphics. And uh, uh, then one of our con solutions consultants, Rich, he also created an app to automate some of that. So you can set some of the basic SVG graphics. You can you can get a copy paste formula from him. But a uh, uh, great call out and and super cool. Uh, but but set yourself some time to get those formula sorted out. It's more of an advanced formula. Yeah, and I will uh, link to the um, the SVG post that Derek just mentioned uh, as well. Uh, okay, so another onboarding uh, question. Can the, let's see, where did it go? Uh, can, so this, we, we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but I want to get some clarity for Oliver here. Uh, can you add a video into the onboarding view instead of an image a follow-up question and this is the meat of it could you prevent someone from clicking next until they have watched the video no uh a onboarding view accepts an image and let's just take a look at the settings here so we go to when we go here so if, if you uh, the graphic to show for each row is an image. Uh, you'll see only only image columns are are provided here. Uh, so if you add a, a video column instead of an image, it's not going to show up, which is one of the the differences that I I call out in um, you know if you wanted to do a detail view like we like I showed in the demo launcher uh, uh, where we let's go back to our huh and you click on one of these. Uh, in this case, it's much more freeform, uh, so you could add video columns here instead. Uh, the second part of that question, uh, forcing somebody to watch the video. I mean, you could get creative. Uh, you know, you you wouldn't necessarily be able to force somebody to watch the whole video, but you could you could have the video, and maybe you could have like a, a you know button or something they have to click that says that you know just asks them to confirm that they watched it, and they have to click that button in order to like get out of that view inside the app. Uh, it, it, that 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 would be a, a creative implementation, but there there isn't a built-in app sheet functionality to ensure that somebody would watch the video. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, so um, Natalie and Derek, I'm going to ask a question that might be a little bit outside of your expertise. Natalie, you might know this a little better. So we have a few questions coming up about uh, a new PDF creation uh, that I know Phil has been working on. And the question is, uh, would you be able to give us an update on the new PDF creation facility? Can you tell us more about it uh, from a feature and improvement standpoint over the current system? Um, shot in the dark, do either of you have an answer for this question? I don't have any context on that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, nor, nor do I. Yeah, okay. apologies, I, I don't either. Okay, so Nigel and Jonathan, uh, we'll follow up with you separately. Um, one of our really incredible engineers, Phil, has been working on this particular functionality. Um, he's he's very much a genius. He's been working with computers since I think computers have been invented. 
Um, but he can, we'll get some information from him um, and follow up on those questions. Uh, okay, so next up, another question from Oliver. Uh, so this is a very popular one. Uh, are there any updates on you know, NAT charts and when they'll be available on the roadmap? Um, so, uh, excuse me, Gantt charts. Um, the, the short answer is this is on the roadmap. Um, we, it will not be released this year. This is part of a larger bundle of chart functionality that um, Thierry has spoken about a few times on previous webinars. Um, there is a chart beta testing group that a number of you are part of. If you are not, go ahead and sign up for that. Um, it will get you approved and you'll be able to test functionality. I know this is a very, 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 very popular topic. I'm sure Natalie and Derek have heard this mentioned several times as well. Um, so we do have this on the roadmap. It just will not be released this year. Um, Derek and Natalie, anything to add to that point? Uh, no, I think you covered it well. Okay. Yeah, uh, all right, so let's... Okay, I'm gonna take a stab at a syntax question. Uh, what is the syntax for using a team drive having trouble based on the examples in the documentation? Uh, let me bring up a article that may be helpful. Check out team resources and data organization for teams. So th this is the article I wrote about, about using team drives as a default storage location for your apps. And if you, there's, there's a couple links to other, other articles here. So uh, let's see this. So the, this, 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 uh, this article links to another one that's specifically about setting up the shared drive. So if I click on that, uh, then we should see here this syntax here. So what that's doing is it's, um, we have a forward slash uh, team drive, my team drive, forward slash something else. So what, what, what that is, the, the, the part here in square brackets, the team drive, that's required. The part here, the, the my team drive, that's the name of your, your shared drive. Shared drives used to be called team drives, uh, it doesn't affect the functionality. And so in this case, the, the syntax in AppSheet is just remain to team drive. So we don't risk breaking something for, for a, a minor word change. Um, so that, that's that's the difference between team and shared. The part to look at here, square brackets team drive required, name of the shared drive, and then any uh, subdirectory within that, uh, you can specify that inside, the, uh, inside your My Account settings uh, to specify that as your default file storage location if you need to. Awesome. If you get Thank uh, you. One, one, thing, one, one thing I'll add on that, if you screw something up and you get a typo, instead of sending it to your team drive, it's just gonna create uh, this drive inside of your default My Drive location. So if you see that show up in your My Drive, check your spelling or check your, check your naming, you, you might have a typo. Awesome. Thank you for that, Derek. And we'll make sure we link this article um, to the post in the community as well. All right. So we're going to ask one more question and then uh, we're going to wrap up. Um, and I've seen this trending on the community a little bit lately as well. And um, either of you may be able to answer this for us. So uh, is it possible to send workflow templates or reports to WhatsApp instead of SMS? No. That's that's gonna I, so I'm gonna be honest that I haven't heard that question before uh, so that, that was my my slight hesitation. Uh, if we go and look at our workflow settings, um, so I've gone to behavior workflow. I can add a new workflow and I can come down to the action and we can go to the SMS here. Um, you can set this up with a Twilio account, a custom Twilio account. You do do that in your my account settings. Um, the, the, the reason I, I give hesitation is the SMS settings here, the built-in ones, um, you're not going to be able to select WhatsApp here. You might be able to do something interesting with a webhook, though. I'm not sure if WhatsApp, maybe they have a REST API, and you could post information uh, to WhatsApp via a REST API call. Um, might be worth checking out, uh, but, th but th that, that would require you know, some, some custom implementation. It wouldn't be a built-in feature. Awesome. 
Well, thank you um, so much, Derek, for that, for answering these questions, and Natalie as well. Um, we're going to wrap up really quickly. I know we're running just a few moments over, um, but so um, next steps for you all. Go ahead and start using some of these features that um, Derek and Natalie both talked about. Again, Natalie's will be released in a few weeks, and we'll create a post. But Derek gave a really, really great overview. Um, I particularly enjoyed your section on behaviors. That's such an important part to understanding how to create su successful applications with AppSheet. So thank you for really uh, diving deep in there. Uh, again, visit community.com. Excuse me, community.appsheet.com. That's my coffee kicking in there. Uh, and connect with other app creators. We have a number of good questions uh, that we'll follow up on this thread for today if we were not able to answer them. Um, and you all can interact with each other to help support each other become uh, better and more innovative app creators as well. And also let us know what you think. Um, drop us either a note on the community via direct message. Feel free to email all of us. I think you all have my email because of the invite. But we're always eager to hear feedback and see how we can improve either these office hours se sessions or um, how we can improve AppSheet as a product for you all as well. And with that, uh, a very special thank you again to Natalie and Derek for taking time out of their day to join us and for all of you for joining us as well. And on that note, um, to quote Thierry, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy app building, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye.